on senior students to enter this auditorium, please be seated. And before we begin, a message from our event manager. Welcome to the Student Union Theatre. My name is Gabby and I am the event manager for today. We would like to remind you that there is no smoking allowed throughout the building. Please note that in the case of an emergency or fire, exits are clearly marked and are located at the front and rear of the theatre on the first floor and at the rear in the balcony. To avoid disturbing other patrons, please turn off or mute your cell phone. Thank you for your intention and enjoy the ceremony. Thank you, Gabby. Good evening. I'm really excited to be here with all of you this evening. I'm Regina Cusson, the Dean of the Yukon School of Nursing, and I want to welcome all of you. First, of course, our senior graduating students, their families and friends and colleagues, our alumni and faculty, and our special guests for this special pinning celebration. I began a tradition a few years ago of establishing a theme for the year and this year, the theme has been Innovations Unleashed. In 2013, collaboration among UConn leaders, our board of trustees, the state's elected officials, and members of the legislature created Next Generation Connecticut. This initiative has taken root since, resulted in a dramatic explosion in science, technology, math, and engineering fields, including nursing science. We celebrate nurse innovators more now than ever. And I will tell you that the president loved it when I said to her we, had, we were preparing next generation nurses. For over the past 70 years, we have been midwives to the next generation of nurses, the next generation of nurse researchers, scholars, and clinicians, educated by faculty who excel in translating lab science into clinical innovations. One of the unique things we do at UConn School of Nursing that you've probably all heard about if you didn't actually participate in was to explore nurses' roles as innovators and change agents through our senior leadership course. Working closely with alumna Christine Meehan, we developed a unique thread throughout the course that culminated in our marquee event, which we had last week, aptly titled The Shark Tank. We were so happy to see the winners of this uh, competition, the O bracelet, and the Stick Attempt group as runners up. And I'm really excited they're actually going to be presenting at NERAC to a group of entrepreneurs and uh, philanthropists this Thursday. So I can't wait to see that presentation. I continue to work with the multidisciplinary team throughout UConn to expand this program with the goal of developing a center in nursing and healthcare innovations. I say to you, class of 2015, all 121 of you, that today is a very important moment in your transition from nursing student to professional nurse. Your class is very special to me because you began your journey to becoming a nurse the year that I assumed my role as dean. We have grown together over the past four years, and this pinning ceremony marks the end of your nursing school career for this degree and the beginning of your transition to professional nursing. It may seem just like yesterday when you began this journey, but through these years you've witnessed happiness and sadness. You've experienced the excitement of seeing a newborn brought into the world and the challenges of caring for others, the privilege of accompanying those at the end of life. And through it all, you have grown as individuals, you've grown closer together as students, and you've become the nurses that society so desperately needs. You have shaped and molded your experience along with the support of family, friends, and colleagues, and your faculty mentors, of course, who were once like you. You will become like them, confident, knowledgeable, autonomous. I'd like the faculty who taught you to stand and be recognized as a group. I am very proud of our faculty. Our faculty foster incredible intellectual curiosity in our students and inspire each 
of them to develop creative solutions to the challenges that we face today. Today is a special moment as you receive the school's pin. It is a ceremony with a rich transition and a rich tradition. The school and its alumni say that you have demonstrated the special characteristics to become a Yukon nurse. It gives me great pleasure to introduce tonight's speaker, and I guarantee that you will not go away from this unchanged. He has been specially <laughs> selected for you, he's back there acting up already, isn't he, <laughs> by the members of the senior class. Professor John McNulty is a man who needs no introduction to anyone here. His dedication to educating future nurses is evident, and I am sure that that's the main reason that you suggested him to speak to you. The class of 2015, please do help me welcome a great nurse, an alum of the School of Nursing, and the director of our pre-licensure program, Professor John McNulty. Thank you for that warm introduction. <laughs> Dean Cusson, faculty, alumni, guests, and especially the members of the class, the nursing class of 2015. Thank you for the honor and opportunity to speak with you on such an auspicious occasion. When I received the invitation to speak with you this evening, I have to admit that I was a bit confused. Over the past four years, I've spent a lot of time with you inside the classroom and outside of the classroom, and I was unsure if I had any more advice or that I could give you <laughs> or anything else that I could say to you. For some of you, we met during the Yukon Open House during your senior year in high school as you were making that final decision as to where you would go to college, and for others, as you reported into orientation the summer before you began classes. There you sat, wide-eyed and eager to start your college careers. Many of you had trepidations about the courses you needed to sign up for, and you asked questions like, should I take my psychology class first semester or statistics? Several of you told me that you'd rather wait to take your English comp course the second semester until you had the chance to adjust to the rigors of academic life on a college campus. <laughs> For the most part, I agreed with you and encouraged you to sign up for the courses you wanted to take. I knew then what you have come to realize now, that your individual paths were going to be this, um, very uniquely yours, but the outcome was going to be the same, earning a baccalaureate degree in the field of nursing from the University of Connecticut, which is going to prepare you to become a registered nurse. I remember that April day when many of you attended the open house. I remember giving a formula that was going to help promote your success in college and help you to reach your goals. It was a very simple formula that you needed to follow. But the important part of that formula was that you needed to do it in the order that I told you. You could not waver from the formula. The formula for your success in college was going to be be safe, study hard, and have fun. Well, obviously you've heeded that advice and that is what has helped you in part get yourself to where you are here today at your pinning ceremony. In preparing for this evening, I was still unsure of what else I could talk to you about as you were about to launch your careers in nursing. I thought back over the past four years and the times I offered you advice and counsel about your role as an aspiring registered nurse. For some of you, I had you in class Nursing 1110, the introduction to health and the discipline of nursing. I was certain we had covered all the various dimensions of health and stress the importance that as nurses we need to recognize those dimensions and to treat people holistically. I know I had every one of you in the spring semester of your sophomore year in Nursing 3120, the health assessment course. I remember teaching you all the various questions you might ask a patient regarding their health and the assessment techniques that you needed to master. Do you remember the first fundamental skill that was taught in health assessment? Yes, wash your hands. I joked with you in lab and reminded you to think about where your lab partner's hands had been before they were about to touch you. <laughs> that same semester, Professor Neefsey introduced you to the microscopic world of microorganisms, the viruses, the fungi, and the bacterial world of E. coli, staph, strep, MRSA, and VRE. All of the pharmacological agents and vasopressors in the world won't help unless you carry out that basic skill of washing your hands in everyday practice. 
I hope that over the past two years, that foundational skill of washing your hands has become second nature to you, like putting on a safety belt when you sit in a car. Your life and your patients' lives depend on it. I remember teaching you about the proper use of many of the instruments that you would use in clinical practice, the pulse oximeter, the thermometer, the tuning fork, the reflex hammer, the Doppler, and the blood pressure cuff. I also remember that I told you the most important instrument that you were going to use in clinical practice was yourself. The powers of observations that you would refine, the active listening skills that you would hone, the critical thinking skills that you would bring to bear in a clinical situation, and the trusting relationship that you would need to develop with your patient and their families that is so essential to the nursing care that you're going to provide to others in the future. I do remember teaching you about this, the stethoscope. I remember, how, I remember teaching you how to properly use it, and I remember telling you about the difference to what makes a good nurse versus an exceptional nurse. Remember? A good nurse learns how to use this stethoscope to hear the various sounds that the heart can make. The exceptional nurse will learn how to use that stethoscope to hear the various sounds, but he or she will also know when it's time to take that stethoscope out of his or her ears, take the time to sit down with their patient, and to really listen to what's going on in someone's heart. For many of you, I am sure you can think back to a myriad of patients that you have taken care of over the past two years where you have engaged in that exceptional nursing practice. So I'm still a little unsure about what else I can offer to you, any other words of wisdom that I can give you. I took some time and reflected back on our time together in nursing 3670, medical surgical nursing. Remember those stick to your seat Tuesdays and Thursday class days? <laughs> Based on circadian rhythms and post-lunch dips in cortisol levels in your body, I had the challenge of helping you master and understand the acutely ill adult. There you were, Dunkin' Donuts or Starbucks coffees in hand, or those cans of Red Bull in full throttle. You are ready to take on the day and absorb all of the knowledge that you could. Hmm. So I asked myself, did I cover every important point that they needed to know? I think I did. I covered the pre-op, intra-op, and post-op care of patients. I covered the proper interpretation of arterial blood gases and the effects on the oxyhemoglobin curve. I even remember covering the basics of the cardiac electrical conduction system and the interpretation of normal sinus rhythm. I even remember covering the most lethal dysrhythmias. When a patient's in V-fib, you? V-fib. All right, well. Well, my gosh. Being the responsible nursing professor, I even had the sex talk with you. How many flights of stairs should a cardiac patient be able to climb without having symptoms to safely resume sexual activity? Two. That's right, two. <laughs> See, you listened and you learned. But of course, you never had any problems answering those sex questions. <laughs> but now those nutrition diet questions on exam, that's another story. So. so I'm still a little stumped as to what else I could talk to you about this evening. I mean, even at the beginning of this semester, I spoke to you about the importance of preparing yourself for the upcoming licensing exam. I told you that it was important and that you should treat your preparation like another class and that you should make time in your weekly schedule to do some review and that you should review your ATI practice and proctor test to create that focused assessment for yourself, remember? Those were the things I suggested to you because I just didn't want you shooting on yourself when it comes June or July. <laughs> so I have been giving you advice across these four years that you spent here. So what additional advice can I give you as you are about to step out and start your own careers in nursing? So I thought long and hard about it and I said to myself, well, yes, there are a few other things that I could think about and share some other ideas for you and I've entitled it Dress for Success. So. <laughs> I have intentionally warned the academic regalia that you too will wear in about 18 days. It is a symbol of the accomplishment that you have attained, earning a baccalaureate degree in the field of nursing. It is a recognition and an acknowledgement of the hard work, long hours of study, 
and the diligence that you have put forth in preparing yourselves to become college graduates and registered nurses. As you graduate, you will join a very small segment of the population that has attained this level of education. Do you know that only about 15% of the adult American population has earned a baccalaureate degree? It is a mark of dis distinction that you should be very proud of, but it carries with it a very awesome responsibility of using the gifts that you have received, the knowledge, caring, and the compassion to make a difference in the world and to help others, especially vulnerable populations who are in need of your nursing care. Unfortunately, you will only wear this cap and gown but for a few brief hours on graduation day. It is not something that we wear daily in our clinical practice to let others know that you are a college graduate and that you're ready to assume the responsibility of, of providing professional nursing care. So at the end of the day on May 9th, you will shed those robes. And instead, you're going to get this. <laughs> the University of Connecticut School of Nursing pin. It is something that you will wear every day in clinical practice. It is a symbol of the level of education you have attained and your ability to assume the role responsibilities of being a registered nurse. It is a signal to you that the faculty have the belief, the faith, and the confidence that you have the requisite knowledge inability and professional comportment to begin clinical practice as a registered nurse. So wear it proudly. You have earned this distinction. During this time here at UConn, you've learned a great deal about human health. You've studied subjects like anatomy and physiology, microbiology, psychology, nutrition, sociology, pharmacology, and patho pathophysiology, to name a few. You've learned what keeps a person healthy and what can result in disease and disability. We use a lot of science in our daily practice in caring for our patients. But I'm here to tell you that the true heart of nursing lies in the art of nursing. The competent, caring, and compassionate acts that you do for and on behalf of your patients. So, <laughs> it's important to remember, and I know it's kind of hard to read my t-shirt, so I'll actually read it aloud to you. Remember this very important point. No one cares how much you know until they know how much you care. Okay? Keep that in mind. Now I know that you're not naive enough to believe that nursing is practiced in an altruistic bubble. Nursing is contextual and it's practiced within a very dynamic socio-political healthcare environment. During your undergraduate education, you have seen firsthand the enactment of one of the most significant legislative changes in healthcare since the enactment of Medicare in the 1960s, the imp implementation of the American Affordable Care Act. It has begun to transform the landscape of healthcare delivery for millions of Americans. We will see how it plays out over the months and years to come and how it may or may not change with the next presidential election in 2016. As nurses, we cannot sit idly by on the sidelines and allow things just to happen. We need to be politically active. So. <laughs> A t-shirt. C-N-P-A-C. It stands for the Connecticut Nurses Political Action Committee. One of your responsibilities of being a registered nurse is that you need to be involved in your professional organizations. Nursing can make a difference. Nurses need to have a presence and a voice in the political arena at the local, state, and national level. We need to be at the table where the policy makers are and the purse string Purse string holders are making decisions related to the delivery of health care. Nursing's voice must be heard. The American Nurses Association just unveiled a new campaign last week. It's called RN Vote. This campaign was developed to encourage registered nurses to get involved in the political process and to exercise their right and their influence in the future direction of health care for our country. Did you realize that one out of 100 Americans is a nurse? 
in one out of 45 registered voters in this country is a nurse. Collectively together, we yield a mighty political force to make changes in health care, but we need nurses to be involved. So I encourage you to make your voices heard. Become involved in your professional organizations, your local and state governments. Be the person who brings nursing's voice to the table. Throughout the four years here at UConn, you have gained a tremendous amount of knowledge about nursing practice and the care of patients. But I'm here to tell you that um, as you um, prepare to take care of those patients and step into clinical practice, your learning curve is going to be steep. There is so much more to learn. I firmly believe that your nursing education here at UConn has prepared you for practice demands for today and even for tomorrow. But I know, and I, uh, but I really do know that you are not fully prepared for the day after tomorrow. That's up to you. I have two pieces of advice on this topic. Make friends with your librarian wherever you work. That individual will help you find the answers to some of the most perplexing clinical questions you have. And the second piece of advice I have is, <laughs> find yourself a superhero, okay? That's so important. Someone who will take you under their wing and guide you through the beginning steps of your career. You need to bounce your ideas off of someone, validate your assessments and your clinical decision-making skills. Seek out and find someone in your work setting who will help you with that transition. And as you adjust to your new role responsibilities and become more confident and competent, become a superhero yourself. Help those people around you. Remember when you were a student and put out that helping hand to those nurses who will follow in your footsteps. Your days are going to be filled with unending challenges trying to meet the demands of your patients and their families, of collaborating with our medical colleagues and working with and coordinating patients with members of the healthcare team. There will be a myriad of variables and details that need your attention in an ever-changing healthcare environment. However, you can rest assured that there are a few absolutes in clinical practice that are not going to change. Two of the most important points to remember is, number one, all bleeding stops eventually. <laughs> and number two, asystole, technically by definition, is a stable rhythm. It's not going to change. <laughs> so, so when you kind of find yourself in those types of situations, I'm going to encourage you to go with the flow. <laughs> Good old Florence Nightingale, in those stressful situations, ask yourself, what would Flo do? And go ahead and do it. I'm sure if she were here today, she would say, What's, do something that's in the best interest of the patient. I think she had the right idea when she defined nursing as putting the patient in the best condition for nature to act upon him. I wonder if she were here today, whether or not she would recognize the role of nursing in healthcare. Obviously, there's been lots of technological changes over the years that have occurred, but the basic acts of nursing care, of ensuring fresh air and clean water, changing of linens, washing of hands, sound nutrition, adequate light, and providing basic care and comfort, all of them are still very salient points of our practice today. Now, as you know, the practice of nursing can be all-consuming. There's always another IV to hang, another dressing to change, a medication to administer, another patient to health teach, and another shift to color, cover. But remember to take time for yourself and <laughs> relax, okay? Take time for yourself and relax. You need to step away and recharge and rejuvenate yourself. I highly encourage you to find another outlet another hobby, or an activity that brings joy into your life. Make sure you spend time with those you love. I think as I grow older, I appreciate the saying that time is more important than money. You can always earn more money, but time is lost forever. Another thing that I would advise you to do to cultivate your career is to actually engage in reflective practice. 
this actually is the famous statue in Paris, France by Rodin called The Thinker, okay? Our professional lives can be very busy as we move from patient to patient with an endless list of things to do. Be wary of letting your practice become rote and mechanistic. Take a half a step back and allow yourself the time to think and reflect on your nursing practice. Ask yourself, do I enjoy what I'm doing? Do I get a sense of personal satisfaction from the work that I do? Could I have done something differently in a given situation to improve the quality of care that I'm providing? Your professional growth will be exponential if you give yourself the time to cultivate a reflective practice. As you graduate, there are going to be a lot of people around you who are giving you advice. Some people will tell you, you can do anything you want. Well, I'm here to tell you that that is bad advice. <laughs> Don't do anything you want to do. Do something that you are passionate about, something that brings personal and professional satisfaction. There are a myriad of opportunities out there, so do something that you love. You have spent the last four years learning about nursing, and I hope along the way you have found out things about yourself. We all have strengths and we all have limitations. When I was in nursing school 38 years ago, I fainted three times in the operating room. I took it as a sign. You know, I certainly was not going to have a career as an operating room nurse. There were other things that I could actually do. So I hope you've begun to find out things about yourself that will spark that flame in each one of you, something that will bring joy and satisfaction. Remember Confucius once said, choose a job you love and you will never have to work a day in your life. I have been lucky. I have to tell you, I've been here at UConn for 18 years and I actually have one of those jobs. Um, most of the time I enjoy it. Actually, the vast majority of time I enjoy it. Probably on a couple of those faculty days like this past Monday, I didn't enjoy it as much, but that's all right. Um, they come with it. So now, of course, um, when I first started teaching, um, I was scared witless when I first started. Maybe the feeling that you're having now is you're ready to step out into your own clinical practices. For myself, when I started teaching, I said, what if I embarrass myself? Oh my gosh. What if I tell them something wrong? Oh my God, is my zipper up? <laughs> I got over it. You don't scare me anymore. <laughs> I just needed to learn how to stay a half a step ahead of you. Um, that's my joy. I always loved learning something new and I enjoyed sharing my love and my passion for nursing with students. Well, now just so that we're completely clear because I know there's some parents in the room before I get a few panicked phone calls from those tuition paying parents tomorrow telling me, Mr. McNulty said that my son or daughter never had to work a day in their life. Remember, I'm speaking figuratively and not in the literal sense about that, okay? <laughs> so now you're ready to graduate and go out there and change the world and make it a better place. But I must be honest with you and forewarn you that change is not all that it's cracked up to be. There are inherent dangers in making change. Um, let me explain. So if I give Alexa Campbell here a dollar and she gives me back four quarters, she's given me change. If I go to Andrew Sanford and I give him a dollar and he gives me back 20 nickels, I got change back. Now if I give Jeanette Murphy a dollar and I get back 100 pennies, I've collected a lot of change. Now all that change is kind of weighing me down I'm finding it hard to keep track of, and I have to keep counting it to make sure I haven't lost any of the change. And if some of it slips out of my pocket to the ground, and if it's just a few pennies, am I gonna stop and pick it up? Probably not. I'm just gonna let that change go. Now, if I give you each of you a dollar, and you take it, and you invest it, and in a little while you give me back two dollars, you've created more value. You've just not given me change, you've transformed it into something that's different. It's bigger, it's better, it's more efficient. You have transformed it. During these four years here at UConn School of Nursing, you have learned some of the beginning foundational building blocks to be that transformational leader in healthcare. You have risen to the challenge to design and create those um, innovative solutions in a shark tank for those healthcare challenges. Through your work on your evidence-based group projects, you've discovered that by investigating a clinical concern, by reading the literature on the current best practices, 
that it can prove to be the impetus for a value-added improvement in care delivery. These basic skills need to be continually honed and further developed so you not only are change agents, but instead you are transformational leaders that we so desperately need in healthcare today. Excuse me for a minute. I'm just checking on my speech here for a minute. <laughs> I just needed to check my notes. Um, it looks like I'm almost at the end of my speech. Um, otherwise, it's going to turn into something else. <laughs> and I'm afraid you're going to have to take out some of those dollar bills. <laughs> and I don't want to go there. And I can guarantee you, you do not want me to go there. Over the past year, you may have noticed that I have been go undergoing my own personal transformation. What I have discovered in the process is that I've gathered a few more wrinkles where I've never had wrinkles before. So I'm not ready really yet for the total reveal. I'm still a work in progress. I'll tell you a deep, dark secret of mine. When I retire from my teaching position here at UConn School of Nursing, I secretly aspire to be a bouncer at Ted's Bar on campus. <laughs> like a couple of your classmates, Mr. Shorter and Mr. Dolan. But I'm still working on my physique. So I guess if you really want to see the final reveal, you'll just have to return to graduate school to see the finished product. Hmm. Was that okay, Dean Cusson? See, Dean Cusson wanted me to insert something into my talk about encouraging and motivating you to return to graduate school. So I think I've hit the mark on that one, <laughs> if you want to come back for the final reveal. So what's my take home message for you? Well, my take home message for you is that you're soon going to be graduating from the University of Connecticut School of Nursing you will join the more than 6,000 UConn nurses who have graduated and gone on to clinical practice. As you graduate, you become an alum and are recognized that you stand on the shoulders of those who have preceded you. Remember that as a UConn nurse, we are committed to praxis in all that we do. Professionalism with the respect for others and their diversity and respect for ourselves, that we are accountable for our actions, and that we strive for excellence in our teaching, research, and care that we provide to others, and that we hold the value of integrity in all that we do, and we are constantly learning and remaining inquisitive, and that we all do it in the service to our patients, our community, and the profession of nursing. As you finish your last remaining days here at UConn as an undergraduate and join the ranks of the UConn alumni family, I want you to remember that you are a, a UConn student today but you're going to be a Yukon Husky forever, okay? So let's hear it for one more time. Yukon Husky! Yukon Husky! Yukon Husky! Husky! Yukon! Well, it sounds like you're in a cheering mood tonight, and I thought you might be, so I made up a cheer for you. You want to hear it? Okay, hold on a minute. I just need to get into my cheerleading outfit, and Liz Schilling will actually know about that. So. Okay, now this is kind of a participatory kind of a cheer. 
So you need to kind of follow along and repeat the cheer, and I know you're quick learners. So just to let you know that it has kind of a military cadence to it, um, hence my camouflage outfit. So are you ready? ready? Okay. I don't know if you've been told. That was all right. <laughs> okay, let's get going here. A tan hut. <laughs> Don't roll your eyes at me. <laughs> I have to bring one of you up here and make you do 10 nursing diagnoses, right? <laughs> okay. I don't know if you've been told. I don't know if you've been told. You kind nurses are strong and bold. You kind nurses are strong and bold. Sound off. Sound off. N-C-L-E-X. N-C-L-E-X. P-R-E-P and Clex Prep. P-R-E-P and Clex Prep. Class is clinical in Sim Lab 2. Class is clinical in Sim Lab 2. I forgot my cheer. <laughs> you believe it? I've been singing it to myself in the car for the last week. <laughs> Class is clinical in Sim Lab 2. Class is clinical in Sim Lab 2. Hard work determination got us through. Hard work determination got us through. Sound off. Sound off. N-C-L-E-X. N-C-L-E-X. P-R-E-P and Clex Prep. P-R-E-P and Clex Prep. Coursework's done, I did my best. Now it's time to take that test. Now it's time to take that test. Sound off. Sound off. N-C-L-E-X. N-C-L-E-X. P-R-E-P and Clex Prep. P-R-E-P and Clex Prep. I'll wear my pin with Yukon pride. I'll wear my pin with Yukon pride. Ready to care by my patient's side. Ready to care by my patient's side. Sound off. Sound off. N-C-L-E-X. P-R-E-P and Clex Prep. P-R-E-P and Clex Prep. I said N-C-L-E-X. N-C-L-E-X. P-R-E-P and Clex Prep. P-R-E-P and Clex Prep. At ease. <laughs> well, I think that's all I wanted to cover with you this evening, or should I say uncover with you this evening. <laughs> but there is one last thing that I want to tell you. Since I started out your UConn experience with a formula for success in college, I'll leave you with another formula that you can use for success in your careers. It's a simple formula, and if you follow it, it has cumulative effects on where you will go and what you can accomplish. Oh, and by the way, you don't need to use a calculator. Okay, here we go. A times A equals A to the Rnth power. Okay? The first A is your aptitude, and it's times your attitude will equal your altitude. So your aptitude times your attitude will equal your altitude. Those two variables, when they multiply them together, will send you to new heights in your career with the Rnth power to make a difference in the world. As each of your names here tonight are called up to the stage to receive your pin, what I want you to know is that as a collective whole of the faculty here that we've already answered two questions for you. The first question is, are you competent? And the second question is, are you able? We have answered those questions and we say yes to both of them. But there's one more important question that you need to answer and you can only answer. Are you willing? Are you willing to take on the full role responsibilities of being a registered nurse? A very simple question, but with a very profound answer. Remember, it's your aptitude plus your attitude is going to equal your altitude. My personal wish for each and every one of you here this evening is that you have high-flying careers in nursing. Thank you for listening to me, and congratulations. Welcome to nursing.
our profession of nursing. So those of you who have only heard about the mysterious McNulty, now you have seen him and you know why they love him so much. In the last eight years since I've been an academic administrator, Professor McNulty has been selected by the class to give the speech at Pinning three times. So I think that really says a lot about how much we really value him and how much our students value him as well. And I now welcome to the podium your class president, Emily Bach. Okay, whoever put me after Professor McNulty, I have a bone to pick with you. <laughs> Good evening, faculty, family, friends, and of course, my fellow colleagues. It is an incredible honor to stand before you on this pivotal day. I cannot express how proud I am to be a part of such a phenomenal class of students. It's hard to believe that in two weeks, we will be walking across the stage at graduation and receiving our degree in nursing. But to focus on the here and now, you might ask, what is pinning and why does it matter? Pinning ceremonies are a rite of passage. Pinning signifies the official initiation into the brotherhood and sisterhood of nurses. The history of pinning traces back to the Crusades of the 12th century, when a group of knights cared for the injured crusaders. When new, when new monks were brought into the knight's order, they decided to continue helping sick soldiers and held a ceremony where each monk was given a Maltese cross that they wore on their arms. Fast forward to the 1860s, when our good friend Florence Nightingale was honored with the Red Cross of St. George for her selfless efforts helping those injured in the Crimean War. Nightingale went on to present medals of excellence to her hardworking nursing graduates. And by 1916, it was standard to award all nursing graduates for a job well done. The pin identified the students as nurses and showed proof of their education. To quote Bill Hartman, MSN, RN, and nursing dean at the Rasmussen College Green Bay campus, the nursing pin has been both literally and symbolically a cross to bear, a medal, and a badge. It is a cross to bear to show nurses' dedication to their patients by staying back and caring for those patients long after others have given up hope and gone home. A medal of honor for the respect nurses have for both the miracle of life and finality of death. And a badge of courage for everything nurses do and represent on the front lines, fighting death and disease and doing so with courage and commitment. At this point, I think every senior in the Yukon School of Nursing can say they made the right choice. We chose Yukon and we chose nursing. And I might add, I'm pretty grateful that Yukon School of Nursing chose us. <laughs> we are entering a profession that will surprise and excite us every day. The next decade of our lives will be full of new and wonderful learning experiences. Choose a job you love, and you'll never have to work a day in your life. I'm a big Confucius fan too, Mr. McNulty. <laughs> that quote always comes to mind when I think about my decision to pursue nursing. It is such an honor to care for patients, to serve them, to provide comfort during perhaps the hardest time in their lives. This is what we will get to do every day, as long as we choose to work. But I won't stand here and pretend that the transition from student to nurse is going to be easy. We will get frustrated. We will make mistakes. We will want to throw in the towel. But we won't. We will persevere. We will learn from our mistakes. And we will never give up. Because even though it doesn't get easier, we will always get stronger. UConn School of Nursing has prepared us to be the best and the brightest. And there is not a doubt in my mind that each one of us will do just that. So wherever you go, whatever you do, remember this. There are 1,440 minutes in a day, 
and therefore 1,440 daily opportunities to make a positive impact in someone's life. Make every minute count. And remember the following. Take care of yourself. As important as it is to help others, your health is just as important. In, in order to care for others, we must first care for ourselves. It is not selfish, it is necessary. Remember to lift others up, your patients, your coworkers, anyone and everyone. Because as we know, there is no better exercise for the heart than reaching down and lifting people up. Remember to be proud of yourself. Take pride in how far you have come and have faith in how far you can go. And remember that whatever you do, do it with passion and do it with love. In the words of my favorite childhood author, Dr. Seuss, you have brains in your head, you have feet in your shoes, you can steer yourself any direction you choose. To conclude, I thought I would share one of my favorite nursing poems with you. Someone asked, you're a nurse? I wanted to do that when I was a kid. How much do you make? The nurse replied, how much do I make? I can make holding your hand seem like the most important thing in the world when you're scared. I can make your child breathe when they stop. I can help your father survive a heart attack. I can make myself get up at 5 a.m. to make sure your mother has the medicine she needs to live. I work all day to save the lives of strangers. I make my family wait for dinner until I know your family member is taken care of. I make myself skip lunch so that I can make sure everything I did for your wife today is charted. I make myself work weekends and holidays because people don't just get sick Monday through Friday. Today, I might save your life. How much do I make? All I know is I make a difference. Thank you. Thank you, Emily, for those parting words to your class. I now introduce you to two great faculty members who helped you along the way as they served your, as your class advisors. Please welcome to the stage Dr. Desiree Diaz, Associate Clinical Professor and Director of Simulation, and Dr. Denise Panoski, Associate Clinical Professor and CHNET faculty member. Well, welcome. We'd like to welcome all the family and friends of the class of 2015 for this pinning ceremony. We do, Professor McNulty, wear our pins with pride. I'm a UConn alum. Dr. Panoski is University of Southern Connecticut. So wear them with pride. You worked really hard for them. We've worked together with your class and class officers since the beginning, and it seems so unreal just how fast time flew by. Unreal? Just like in a simulation. <laughs> Maybe we should do a debrief, Dr. Panowski. I think that would help, Dr. Diaz. It just doesn't seem possible. It seems a little bit fake. I think we should take it from the top. Effectively, how have you felt about this class, Dr. Panowski? I feel very excited, but I also feel a little bit sad. So many conflicting emotions. But I am so very happy for all of you to become registered nurses in the very near future. OK, great. Now, I'm going to put the timer on. I really want you to cognitively think about where they've come. I'm going to take some notes, so don't get worried. It's not about the grade that you get. We really, <laughs> we really want to make sure you can synthesize everything that we just did for the last four years. So let me just start. Go ahead. Synthesize? Well, we started off together in the fall of 2011 with our new building, or without our new building. And then we had the opening of the Widmer Wing in the fall of 2012. That was a very special time for us and for you guys. Do you remember the very first day you were even in the Widmer Wing? Or even your very first day you walked into the School of Nursing? Wow, how time flies. I just received a text from one of you. That is not appropriate. While we are in the rapid fire debrief, Will. <clears throat> but during your rapid fire, I'm sorry, you may lose points. <laughs> you have 10 more seconds. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I don't know what to do next. 
well, maybe someone will be able to text us the answers, <laughs> which is not appropriate. <laughs> oh, your time is done. <laughs> Good job, excellent job in that rapid fire. Thank you for the assistance from the audience. <laughs> now, the DML is where we start to blend your plan of care and your nursing process. I see in my assessment that I've written down here, you've bonded with the students and we've taken a lot of time with them throughout the years. And I see that you may be having a fear of separation related to maybe commencement. Is that correct? Well, yes, it is, Dr. Diaz. I know we need to be at the School of Nursing on May 6th at 1 p.m. for a mandatory graduation rehearsal. <laughs> and we need to be sure to get all our forms into Betty and Pam by April 27th. We still have time. But it still feels so unbelievable that four years has flown by. I really can understand that. I feel the same. I also see that you've identified some interventions to decrease your anxiety about our students leaving us. I also just want to close the learning loop. I really want to make sure that we are all on the same page. I want to say that while we are sad that you're leaving us, and some of us are also leaving, you'll always stay in our heart as being your advisors for the last four years. We're ecstatic that you'll be joining the profession of caring and compassion. We know that you've explored the art and science of nursing. So when you go out in the real world, remember, once a husky, always a husky. Dr. Panoski, is there anything else you'd like to add before we close our debrief session? First, I'd like to ask you all, did you notice a theme? <laughs> there is some other things that we'd like to just say. It has really been our pleasure getting to know each and every one of you, getting to know your class, getting to work with you and all your class officers. We'll remember all of you. We'll miss you a lot. But you know where to find us. Well, some of us. Um, best wishes as you all enter the profession of nursing and make differences for all the patients that you care for. Good Congratulations. luck. Congratulations. Thank you both for your remarks. Our nursing pin has the beautiful and sacred Charter Oak at its center. It is synonymous with wisdom, longevity, endurance, and hospitality. When you receive your pin, you will notice that it comes on an apricot ribbon. In American higher education, apricot is the color of nursing. You'll see lots of apricot at graduation in your faculty's academic regalia. I hope many of you will continue to wear the color when you return to your education to complete postgraduate degrees here at UConn. So you've got to get that last reminder in. At last, the moment has arrived. It's time to present this class's graduates with their pins. We're ready. All right. In a few moments, members of the class of 2015 will walk to the platform. I'll announce each candidate's name. The student will be pinned by their capstone instructor. Audience, please hold your applause until the final graduate has been pinned. First group, would you please approach the stage? And as I call your name, please approach your capstone pinner. Doc dean Cousin will offer her congratulations to each of you, and at that point, you'll be photographed with the dean. I don't think you need to, this reminder, but don't forget to smile as our photographer, Roger, captures the moment after you receive your pin. Okay? So we'll begin with section one, which is, which is Janet DeFrancesco's group. Ready? Our first student is Alexa Campbell.
cello. Nicole Jubilier.
Erickner.
Mitchell Friedman. Catherine King will be painting our next group of students, and her first student is Emily Bach.
Lisa Myers. <laughs> Thank you.
Jennifer Forthofer and Ki uh, Kim Jiwa are present to pin their students, and their first student is Carolyn Elves. <laughs> Elena DePaolo. <laughs> Molly Fillion. Congratulations, colleagues, and welcome to the profession of nursing. We need you, and we know you'll make us proud. But we are not through yet. At this time, we ask our 2015 and 16 class officers to the stage. The class of 2016 class president, Amanda Miller, is not with us today as she is enjoying her study abroad experience in Puerto Rico and is scheduled to return on May 6th. It gives me great pleasure to introduce to you Haley O'Rourke, Vice President of the Class of 2015. Dr. Jean Watson is a nursing theorist and founder of the Watson Caring Science Institute. She visited us previously and brought a special candle that she used to light the candles of a thousand nurses. The flame has circled the globe a dozen times, passed from nurse to nurse, symbolizing the unbroken chain of nursing solidarity. Today, the class of 2015 passes the flame of nursing to the class of 2016, recognizing that nursing's nature and nursing's obligation is to light the path to human health for others. As the class of 2015 lights the candle of its successor, class of 2016, please listen to this important passage. If there is light in the soul, there is beauty in the person. If there is beauty in the person, there is harmony in the house. If there is harmony in the house, there is order in the nation. 
If there's order in the nation, there is peace in the world. Thank you for passing the spirit of your very special class onto the excellent class that will follow you. And now the class of 2015 officers will present its class gift to the School of Nursing. Please welcome class treasurer, Gabrielle Dragoda. The class officers are proud to announce that our senior class gift is an updated exhibit to honor our founding dean, Carolyn Ladd Widmer. This act of philanthropy will be a lasting way to memorialize our class in the Yukon nursing history. The class officers would like to thank all students, alumni, faculty, and staff that contributed to the fundraisers that made this donation to the school possible. Thank you. Thank you very much, class of 2015. This concludes our pinning ceremony, but just a few housekeeping remarks. Guests in the audience, to avoid clog aisles, please remain seated until the seniors have filed out of the theater. After the program, please feel free to gather for personal pictures and conversation in the ballroom on the third floor or outside. We have been asked to keep the student union lobby and hallways clear. Seniors, you will follow the platform party, that's follow behind me, and recess from the theater where we will go to the plaza stairs outside of the student union for your final class photo. When you go back to the ballroom to reunite with your guests and gather your belongings, don't forget to pick up your pinning box with your name on it. I look forward to seeing you all again in a few short weeks at commencement. And now seniors, please stand and look to your ushers for assistance to recess. <laughs> <laughs>